Now let's go back a little weeny bit and go and actually talk about a couple of these genes and what they actually do and how is this delivered. So let's get a little bit scientific if you've got a few more minutes for me. <laughs> I'm going over time already, but um, like PG, oh, no, let's start with Clotho. Okay. I heard in one of your interviews you're saying when you got Clotho, your, your, when you did IQ tests, your IQ increased by one standard deviation, I think Sarabhan said or something. And I was like, wow. <laughs> and um, and this is one that's going to ha- that's helped them with dementia. Tell us a little bit about Clotho, what it does. And then also, if you don't mind, just explaining the viral vector. What is it? How does it get into the cell? What does it do? You're genetically modified in that sense. Um, yep. How does that work? Yeah, so uh, let's talk about how gene therapy is delivered, and then that will help us basically understand a gene product better. Uh, so when we go to deliver genes, there are several ways to do it. Companies are coming up with new ways all the time, but the best and standard way is using viral vectors. Uh, these are vectors that basically uh, dock onto your cell. They inject their DNA into your nucleus, and then that nu- that DNA transcribes for their functional machinery and helps them proliferate and then spread to someone else. Well, with gene therapy, we like to use viral vectors because they can get genetic information to the nucleus of the cell for long-term and persistent expression. So when you uh, hear about CRISPR technology or somatic cell delivery or anything that on that level, they all use viral vectors. Um, A lot of people don't know that. They think CRISPR is like this thing on its own. But you have to get the machinery into the nucleus of the cell because the nucleus of the cell is where your, your chromosomes sit and that's where your genes sit. So we basically take out a virus's ability to get you sick. We take all of its machinery out. We basically um, then put therapeutic genes into its capsid and we leave the docking mechanism, the mechanism that docks up with the cell and sends the genetic material to the nucleus. So you are not getting sick. Um, We are not giving you the virus that the um that originally was there before it was attenuated that's what it's called we take out its ability to replicate and what you're getting is uh, therapeutic gene delivery and this is nature's uh, best way of delivering genes it's been happening for millions and millions of years on the planet Um, it's suspected it's why uh, we evolved conscious thinking for humans and a myriad of other super benefits that happened to us when we we were infected by viruses that gave us genes that that helped us evolve i know that's a challenging uh conversation for some people but it's actually scientifically shown and uh aliens is a cooler thing maybe maybe aliens (laughs) came we got them from there i would love to believe there were aliens and we're going to meet them next week um but Anyway, it appears that it's just a virus is doing their job and, and basically uh, giving us some genes. Some genes are superpowers and some are, are not beneficial. So when we uh, fix these genes into uh, these viruses, we then have to, wh- why is a gene therapy so expensive? So let's let's split therapies into two groups. One is an immunization. Um, and in an immunization, you're trying to give the least amount of genetic information as possible, but create a huge immune response. You want your body to know that that immunization hit you within minutes of being given it. So we put adjuvants in there and we say, have a huge response and have a huge response Mm. to this piece of genetic information. With a gene therapy, instead of giving you a little amount in an immunization, we're trying to give you a huge amount of gene therapy because these don't uh, replicate. We, you only are going to get benefits from what we put in at one time, but we don't want your immune system to have any response. Mm-hmm. So these are very, very carefully made. There, there can't be any of the viral DNA in there that might create an immune response. Your body has to think that it's business as usual. And we literally put in quadrillions of perfect little viral vectors with your perfect little gene set. So um, in that case, it delivers them to your cell. And so you asked about Clotho. 
So Clotho uh, became of interest to us when we saw that it had increased lifespan by over 20% in animal models. It is a geroprotector. We know that in kidney disease and in cardiovascular mm -hmm. disease, one of the things that we see is as the disease goes up, Clotho goes down. So we want to upregulate Clotho and create this geroprotective balance for the kidneys and the cardiovascular. Well, then there were interesting studies that came out in mice. They showed if you gave mice alpha clotho, their cognitive response to their environment went up at least 20% within minutes. And it stayed up uh, as long as the gene, the gene product was transcribing. And so then there was another study that came out that showed people who upon, so in dementia, uh, there's something called Alzheimer's. You're probably aware of it. It really can't be diagnosed until after you die. You can have suspected Alzheimer's, but it's usually diagnosed upon autopsy. Mm. But they found that upon autopsy, people who clearly had every sign of Alzheimer's, but didn't have the cognitive decline were alpha clotho upregulators. Oh, wow. And then more recently, there was a non human primate study done that showed that it increased their cognitive ability as well. So, this one little protein um, is doing a massive amount of things, helping our brains transcribe information, helping our memories form more coherently, and protecting uh, vital organs in, in our body. And that's just one gene. Wow. And um, again, it's responsible for a lifespan increase of over 20% in mice. And so, you know, these are genes that have had um, multiple meta analysis, uh, different labs who are not associated with each other doing all of these different research projects that I told you about. These are all coming from different places. And we feel that this gene uh, needed to be in humans a long time ago. So in 2020, I took the, the gene therapy to, to vet whether or not I thought it was safe, at least in my body and N equals one. And we decided to move forward with it. Wow. Okay. And, and your intelligence on oh, went case, up 10 points. went up 10 yeah, points. Went up, yeah. Went up 10 points. And for, you know, I'm not the smartest person in the room. So for me, that was super beneficial. Um, it helped <laughs> finish my MBA and, and start the <laughs> A regulation company whilst running BioViva. And, and I don't think I could have done it without it. But for some people, you know, that could literally, if they're super intelligent, pitch them over into, you know, absolute um, uber intelligence. But for <laughs> other people um, who are having dementia or are born with lower IQs, it could actually help them go back, get pushed up into a normal uh, place. And, and think about how many kids struggle in school, um, who it might help, um, you know, put them wow. on a, a better playing field. You know, it used to be, you know, you were born with your genes and like you, super athlete, you know, you, you are lucky to have run as far as you have run. Some people are in the Olympics for sports. They're super flexible. They're super strong. And before it was just literally, you know, everyone says, well, what isn't that, you know, gene doping? Is that fair to be able to do a gene therapy? Well, is it fair that only so many people are born highly intelligent, yeah. highly skilled at music, are able to go to the Olympics? Shouldn't anyone who wants to put in the hard work be able to do that? So Exactly. I future, had no genetic advantage. Learned. I had to oh, work the hard way. You did it, girl. You did it. You know, you did it. And, and maybe that's your tenacity. You have a gene or a set of genes that make you special. I love you. I mean, <laughs> I rarely meet people who would try so hard. Um, most people won't. They just throw up their hands. It's, you know, it, it's, it's work. It, it would be too hard to help someone else. You know, that, that there's, there has to be something special about that. Yeah, it's definitely a, um, the gene. Um, a couple of my genetic teachers have said you've got a really good combination of some really effed up genes <laughs> as far as mindset goes, <laughs> which isn't always on the positive side because it means that you're always chasing dopamine and you have a lot of traumatic. Uh, you you hold traumatic uh, memories stronger than most, and so on. So you know it's not all got hey, positives, you but. Know what? What does happiness do? Like humans were not born to be happy. We wouldn't have the houses we lived in. We wouldn't have buildings and hospitals. We are, we are, we are built for discontent. 
And that's a very beautiful thing because the very few percentage of the population will actually reach out and try to change that. And, and that's where it comes down to pioneering. We are here because we're discontent. We want better, we demand better, and we're not gonna stop until we get it. And, and that that's actually a really beautiful thing. Yeah, it does have some positives. It has some goods and absolutely. Um, let's just talk about one of the others and then I'll, I'll let you go because I don't want to, you know, I, I want to have you back on. I want to go deeper into the science and, we, and we'll, we'll, we'll be connecting on a number of levels, I think. Um, but uh, PGC1 alpha is another very interesting one. Mitochondria are at the basis of all or, or many, many diseases when they start to go awry, when your mitochondria stop producing their energy like they should and stop being nice and big and fat and healthy um pgc1 alpha um i know this from doing cold therapies and you know um heat shock proteins and cold cold stuff to try to get more mitochondrial biogenesis going on is that what pgc pgc1 alpha as a gene therapy is aimed at getting more healthy in mitochondria yeah it is so uh, mitochondrial dysfunction is a hallmark of aging and so the, the one of the big target genes for that is pgc1 alpha um, it probably could also um, help with things like gross obesity and uh, different things, but just getting energy to your cells so that they can repair damage is a big, big deal in um, aging. Uh, when our mitochondria become dysfunctional, uh, when there's less of them, when they when they don't work as well, uh, we are not able to repair. And so this was a gene that was first seen in people who exercise. Uh, people who exercise can upregulate this gene, but I'm, I'm, I'm sad to say that with aging, we have diminishing returns mm -hmm. and regulate it enough yourself, but you know, it's why you lose weight. Um, we think that it is the, the game changer in white to brown fat, probably mm -hmm. brown fat is brown because it has a lot of mitochondria in it. Isn't that interesting? And that that's fat that you can use more readily. Yep. Um, and so it also is probably a key player in uh, dementias as well as, you know, helping with mitochondrial dysfunction in the brain. So this is a, a another uh, gene that we work with, which is a natural human gene uh, that we're just basically giving you more of for specific indications. And then we've got uh, just briefly folistatin, um, which is going to help with muscle uh, synthesis. So inhibit myostatin, uh, which can, you know, stop us being muscular enough uh, as we get older and we start to get sarcopenic and osteoporosis and things like that. And it also has other effects too, doesn't it? The folistatin, it's not just more muscle and less fat. Well, you know, your muscle is like, you know, directly um, tied into your metabolism. So we're talking uh, lower HbA1Cs, mm -hmm. uh, which means lower blood glucose across mm. the board, which is a driver of massive amount of damage in your body uh, when it's too high. Uh, we're talking, you know, it's it actually seems to uh, speak to stem cell niches and get stem cells more active in the body. Um, fuller, thicker hair, I think is something that we saw in all the mouse studies. And, and I have definitely <laughs> seen myself. Somebody just sent me a video recently of uh, myself when I was like 18. And I'm like, I have more hair now than I did before. Wow. But I don't know if you can, you probably can't see my muscles, but my muscles, <laughs> man size muscles under here. And Yay. and that's full of statin. And, wow. and so, you know, that's, that's protecting you, uh, from, you know, interstitial fat and, and all of those type of things that, that kill us. So, um, it's, it's a beneficial gene therapy on its own. It extends the lifespan of mice by about 30%. And, you know, please take note at no point am I saying that any of these cure aging, they all have this lifespan extension in mice, but the mice still die. They live healthier, longer. They look better um, pretty much till the end. Uh, but our goal is to cure aging. And so that's why we work on combinatorial therapies. Yeah. And this is this is the bigger picture. So at the moment, you haven't cured aging, to be clear, but you have slowed it down. And these, these therapies we, are showing that. Yeah. And if you look at the hallmarks of aging, we have started to reverse hallmarks of aging. So in order to cure all of aging, you're going to have to reverse all of those. All of them. 
Yeah. So yep. then you cured aging, but you know, when you have some short fuses out there, but telomerase reverse transcriptase, the one that lengthens the caps at the ends of the chromosomes. I mean, that's the greatest lifespan gain with gene therapy. And then there's epigenetic reprogramming, which we can do, and it makes the cell look wow. really young. It actually gets you less lifespan than fullostatin. Oh, wow. Yeah. Even though the mice look great, they, you know, they don't live as long as just increasing their muscle mass. So we need to put these therapies together. Yeah. And that's incredible. I'm just so excited. And if people are now, so if there are people listening out there that want to help us in the fight on the regulatory side or want to present this and start help, you know, helping to mobilize people to actually make this happen, where are they best to reach out to? And um, for those listening that are interested in actually doing the medical tourism side, which is available at the moment and being a part of these, this clinical research, if you like, and also helping yourself um, in trying these things. Um, and, you know, with all the caveats that this is, you know, you have to go in with your eyes open, you have to have, you know, consent, you need to understand what you're going in for. Um, if anyone is interested, how do they initiate this, this process? Right. Yeah. The, you know, what if you go out there and you look at gene therapy companies, you know, be careful. Um, this is, you know, proceed at your own risk. Um, any terrible outcome could, come, could happen, even death. We work with integrative health systems. They've never seen an adverse uh, drug event. And so they work in very safe doses and they work with protocols that are streamlined to help companies eventually get to clinical trials. And so that's integrative-health-systems.com. And then if you're interested in helping me uh, push regulations, if you know someone, reach out uh, directly to me at bioviva-science.com. Um, but if you just only have the time to do a, one minimal uh, thing, then please go to Best Choice Medicine, no hyphens, bestchoicemedicine.com and sign the petition that demands access for patients now. That helps us uh, bring work up with governments. If we can get enough signatures in your location, then we can apply and we can say, we have a team that can help you do this and your population is demanding access now. Wow. And literally, I believe that you will not only save millions of lives, but billions of lives with these pre-regulatory paths. Yeah, and this is why you are tirelessly fighting towards these massive goals, and you need an army of people on your side to help you. So, oh my gosh, yeah, we we don't want to make any enemies. If you have questions, if you're concerned about gene therapy, um, if you're you know worried about something, you know, reach out. We we have answers to those questions. The the somatic cell gene therapies, for instance, are not contagious. They don't pass on to offspring. We're not modifying embryos. This is That's for important. Health. Reasons. Yeah. And so it doesn't change you genetically as far as your germline is concerned. So if you have children, you're not going to be passing on any of the genetic changes that you've had done to yourself, any of the upregulation or yeah. Very, very important point, I think. Um Liz, thank you so much for your time today. Um oh, this won't be the last Having conversation. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs>